r slash ask reddit what is something about yourself that sounds totally made up but is 100% real i was at a store when tony hawk was signing autographs i was only 10 at the time and was a huge fan one of his early video games had just come out the store had a couple tvs on the wall and some video games to play being a kid i waited for one controller to open up and someone leave a kid ended up leaving and I grabbed the controller and started playing and minding my own business. A couple minutes later the store wanted to grab photos of Tony playing his own video game. He came over and grabbed the second controller and began to play multiplayer with me. Probably played for 10 minutes. The bonus was it was also my 10th birthday. So I played Tony Hawk Pro Skater with Tony Hawk. A pelican engulfed my head with its massive ducking beak when I was a small child. Pelicans are dunce. I won two TV game shows. The $10,000 Pyramid, won $10,300 in 1975, and Sale of the Century was on the show for 9 days, won $34,000 in cash and prizes, in 1985. I got ran over by a car, but the driver didn't see me and proceeded to back over me. Edit. Thanks for all the kind words. I'm shocked at the amount of people who said that this happened to them or someone they know knew as well. The world really is a weird place. And for all who are asking, my legs are perfectly fine now. On a side note, I actually really enjoy running. It's one of my favorite things to do. No I'm not from China nor have I ever lived there. I'm American. I don't quite understand why people are asking this. Edit number 2. A couple redditors have pointed out to me that it's because killing someone in China is apparently less expensive. Which is a horrifying thought, but thanks for the explanations. I ran out of gas outside of La Paz Bolivia. Luckily it was downhill for about 6 kilometers into the city. I coasted the whole way on my motorbike, passed buses and drifted into a gas station. Never missed a beat. At age 50 odd and with limited to no video game experience. My mother completed Mario 64 before I did, in about half the time it finally took me to do it. I've had a headache since August 2015 and I will probably have it for the rest of my life, but it's only on half my head, so I got that going for me, which is nice. 9zih.gov link. I am related to William Henry Harrison. The president who died from hypothermia because he wouldn't wear a jacket. My great grandfather and his son both died from hypothermia as well but under slightly different experiences. I have almost died from eating way too many vitamins. Jumping into a ceiling fan. And jumping from a cliff. My dad almost lit a gas station on fire. Basically, we are a very dumb bloodline starting from William Henry Harrison. When I was a kid, I woke up to find my cat giving birth to her kittens on my pillow, one inch from my face. I took it as a compliment. When my mom was in grad school she took several labs where she worked with cadavers. Because my dad worked nights she often had to take me to class with her, and she'd usually just plonk me down on the table with the cadaver while she worked on it. I bought a guitar amp from Brad Whitford, of Verismith, when I was 17. He and Steven Tyler served up cheeseburgers for me and my friends. Edit. As requested. So. Brad's son was a punk and I knew him from the scene. I was in a band that had some small local marginal success. This is 97 stroke 98 in Boston. I needed a new amp for our first US tour but had very little money. I was getting drunk with his son and. On a whim. I asked him if his dad had any amps laying around that he didn't need. We laughed and carried on partying. The next day, I get a call at my home. It was Mr. Whitford himself. He was super nice but to the point. My son says you got a band and need a good rig for your lepaul. I have something in mind for you. Just gotta have my guy get it from the warehouse. Come by my house in Norrell this weekend and check it out. That was the gist of the call. Obviously, the whole band came with me and our roadie. We get to his house and it's totally him. So weird. These guys were like God in Boston. I wasn't the hugest fan but knew him from his work with Wayne's World. He takes me to one of his garage, S, where there is this cool full stack. The brand is Bedrock, an old company from New Hampshire that made good quality amps in the 80s. This one was custom made for Brad. Basically Marshall components. 4 tubes. All the knobs go to 11. Not kidding. 
still has the property of Aerosmith stickers on it. He plugs it in and rips a crazy solo on his Les Paul and then hands it to me and I play a couple power chords. He asks for $300 for the whole thing. I pay him and he tells his son to give us a tour of the house. This is where shit gets nuts. It's just like you expect. Tons of gold records. Platinum records. Pictures of him with people like John Lennon. Robert De Niro and Joey Ramone. Then we get to see his studio and the largest collection of martial amps in the world. Seriously. Like 200 caps. A wall of guitars. Guitars so pretty and amps so cool. It made sense for him to find the one he sold me dispensable. After the house tour, he told us to meet him at the little bar and grill they owned in town. When we get there early and he arrives 30 minutes later with Methodic and Steven Tyler in tow. Are you guys the punk group? He was so nice. They went in the back and came out with burgers for us all on the house. Then they straight up left. Irish goodbye. Even. I still have the amp. I used it on the road for almost 10 years in 5 bands. Now, it's just a conversation piece, but it still works. I'll crank her up every now and then. Edit to pics. I am good.com link. I am good.com link. I can't look left. Seriously, I'm not an ambi looker. It's like the Zoolander of birth defects. It's called Dwayne's syndrome and my left eye can't turn left so if I try to look to my left I see double. Growing up my parents raised me to believe it was a party trick and not a disability so I would always show it off to friends. Which in retrospect I think was pretty sweet. Edit. My mom discovered that something was off when I was a baby and she was doing the airplane motion with the spoon of baby food to the left. My left eye was not cooperating lol. Edit 2. Fun fact. Now that I'm in my 30s I can see in photos that there is a bag under my right eye but not under my left eye. Presumably because I use my right eye far more often. Edit 3. I am so excited to see there are so many fellow redditors with Dwayne's and I'm not alone. I've never met anyone else who had it so it's really nice to hear from people who know what it's like. Edit 4. A lot of you have asked about driving. It didn't impact me mainly because my mom taught me how to use my mirrors first by turning my head before even letting me turn the car on for the first time. She walked around the car and we tried to identify my limitations. I also have a blind spot detector on my car now which is super helpful. I try not to totally depend on it though. Edit 5. Here's a photo. I was once sponsored by the Crunk Energy Drink Company for sailing. I imagine I was the only sailor on their list. I literally just emailed them saying that I sailed and asked if they wanted me to put stickers on my boat. They sent me a few cases of the drink. T-shirts. Hats. The works. My car was known as the Crunk Mobile. I am one of very few people outside World War 1 to live through mustard gas. So rare the doctors. 1995 no internet. Had no idea how to treat me. I cannot see 3D effects in movies or games. I didn't know that until a friend showed me his new Nintendo 3DS and I asked him whether this thing was a scam because it didn't look any different to me than a normal DS. We had a fight over this because we both thought the other one was bullshitting him. You're holding it wrong. How the duck do you not see this? Are you ducking kidding me right now? There's nothing 3D about this thing. I got hernia by sneezing too hard. I saw the former prime minister of Poland in his underwear. One of my ancestors was dumb and bought one of Napoleon's doorknobs. It turns out it's fake. Doorknobs were invented after Napoleon died. My great great grandfather was a Pinkerton detective, acted on vaudeville, and had five wives in two different states that knew nothing of each other. He also slightly changed his last name each time and never got caught until ancestry website happened lol. I've been stabbed 8 times. Edit. This is a fairly new account so I'm prepared to identify myself. Scotland Judiciary Org UK link. Google.com link. Edit. I didn't get the chance to tell my story in court as they pled guilty before I was called. I was drunk and I came out the pub I was in to get some fresh air. I walked past 3 guys and one of them asked me for a cigarette. I told him I don't smoke and he became immediately aggressive. I argued with him for a while and his friends started shouting at me and threatening me. At this point he kind of disappeared behind me. One of the others showed me a knife so I turned and walked away. I knew they were following me as was walking back to the pub. I had a bus stop on my left hand side and a building on my right. 
I looked up and saw the first guy walking towards me. It was fight or flight and I had nowhere to fly to so I decided that attack was the best form of defense. I think I managed one punch before the three of them jumped me. They had been robbing and beating up people all over town for about two weeks beforehand. Once in college I applied for a job at the library help desk. I figured I would help people find books. Didn't give it much more thought than that. During the interview, I aced all of the customer service questions. Then they asked me whether I knew how to defrag a hard drive. Cue alarm bells in my head. But I kept calm outwardly and said no. But you can teach me. I worked in IT for 3 years by accident. They were too nice to fire me. I once successfully ran an unfunded shelter for 100 homeless veterans. As a homeless civilian. I've been in 3 fatal train accidents. Never had a scratch. I had my tongue surgically enhanced for more reach and flexibility when I was 8. Edit. I'm super jazzed by how many of us are out there. I cannot taste any salt whatsoever. Edit. For people asking it's a brain thing. Food tastes bland. Salted chips taste plain. And I've not had any British food. Edit too. I can still taste other spices and herbs. No IDK what cum tastes like. Sorry to put you on blast dude but that's weird. Salt water just tastes bad. Message and other sodium based things just make me gag. Getting on Xbox, Overwatch, etc. Doesn't help but I can smell the salt. I was baptized by a serial killer. Arrested and spent 3 days in a holding cell for a crime that I didn't commit. About a year after the whole matter was done and dusted with. Mind you, I say didn't commit a crime. But I was involved in the story from start to finish. My grandfather went AWOL on the French Foreign Legion and was banned from ever going back to France. All because he left to marry my grandmother. Edit. Oh god this blew up. Reddit Youtubers please don't feature this comment. My grandpa left his royal status to marry my grandma. My family ancestry can be traced back to a court jester who served in the court of King Jacob IV of Sweden. I took my mother for a surprise trip to NYC. She got married to my father there in 1968. The surprise was manufactured by way of telling her we were going to Australia we live in New Zealand. So a trip to Australia is not a huge deal. It's the type of thing you could do for the weekend and therefore she packed a bag and brought her passport. We got to the airport and said surprise. We're going to New York. And she cried her eyes out with delight. When we arrived. On our first morning. I said okay. What do you want to do? She said when I was last here. In 1968. The twin towers weren't complete. So. I'd like to go to the top of them. Your wish is my command. I said and off we went to the WTC. That was the afternoon of the 10th of September. 2001. Suffice it to say. There was a particular poignancy when we looked out the window at around 8am the next morning. My grandfather got a reward from Mussolini in 1935. He was just born with 6.3 kilograms. 13 lbs 14.2 oz. And was awarded the award of Italy's biggest baby. Edit. Whoa. I didn't expect it to blow this way. Thanks for the silver you slash sandwich xx. Also. Since some people asked. My great grandma also worked as a cleaning lady one day before he was born. He was born the 24th of December. And she worked until the 23rd of December of that year. And if you think my grandpa was big. Recently a baby was born in India with 6.7 kilograms. 14.77 lb. And the world record was for another Italian baby. Born in 1955 with flipping 10.2 kilograms. 22 lb 8 oz. I beat anorexia. I'm a guy and I do not have photos of me from that time. Due to shame. So I have no proof. I have gone from 70 pounds to 130 pounds. I was shooting some stuff in my village and a bullet ricochet and hit me in the torso. I was afraid my parents would kill me if they found out. I was young. So I used a knife and tweezers to remove the fragment and a stapler to stitch it up and then cover the wound and they never found out until a few years later when I told them. I was born 12 weeks early and was nearly born earlier my mom had a weak uterus from Indo. So they had to push me back and stitch her up. The doctors told my parents to expect me to be unable to breathe, walk, etc on my own. 
The doctor performing the c-section nearly dropped in surprise and how hard I was screaming and flailing. I do have a few health problems, but it could have been much worse. Editing since others are mentioning their experiences and health issues. I had hydrocephalus. It was treated poorly. The doctor thought I was fine. And my parents were overreacting when I was seizing and turning colors. It was treated. And now had 6 featuring of tubing in the form of a shunt. As well as seizures I'll never outgrow. They're treated with medication. Otherwise. Outside asthma and other smaller things. I live a normal life. I graduated high school a few years ago. And hope to be married soon. Edit 2. Thank you everyone for your stories. TBH. I'm a bit overwhelmed. I didn't expect my comments to blow up like this. I'm going to do my best to respond to everyone. But I apologize in advance if I don't. I promise I'm reading every comment. And they all mean so much. I lost my heel in a lawnmower accident. Edit. Here's the story. I was 4 at the time and I won't say who exactly did it. But he was mowing and it was a riding mower and the hitch on the back where you can hook a little trailer. I love to stand on that part and ride. Well this time I saw the frog in the grass and being the 4 year old I was at the time. I jumped off the mower and onto the grass and put my hands over the frog to catch it and he didn't realize I had jumped off and he backed up. I once won a $500 raffle during a routine visit to my local tea shop. It was the building's annual Black Friday event and there were 5 baskets with varying amounts of goods, services, and coupons. I needed tea. So my only stop was the tea shop. It cost me $20 to fill my tins. But they said raffle tickets were given out after a $25 purchase. I said duck it and got a hot tea for me and the woman in line behind me. Entered with that one ticket. I got a call a few days later saying I won the top prize basket. When I went to claim, they asked about my purchases. I told them and they said the drawings had over 1000 tickets and many people had over a dozen entries. The raffle prize included $25 to the tea shop. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.